Today is the third Sunday of Easter, and we gather in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear friends, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. All together, I confess, confess to Almighty, Almighty God, God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that, that I have greatly sinned in, in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my, my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray, to pray for me to the Lord, Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth is to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give thanks for your great glory. Lord God. Let us pray. May your people exalt forever, O God, in the renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, may we look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. In the name of the Apostle, Peter declares to the crowd that the ministry and the death of Jesus were according to God's plan of salvation. Because Jesus was obedient to the Father, God raised him up and made him the source of our salvation. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob, 
the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked that a murderer be released to you. The author of life you put to death, but God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouth of all the prophets that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, let your face shine on us. Lord, let your face shine on us. When I call, answer me, O my just God, you who relieve me when I am in distress. Have pity on me and hear my prayer. Lord, let your face shine on us. Know that the Lord does wonders for his faithful one. The Lord will hear me when I call upon him. Lord, let your face shine on us. O Lord, let the light of your countenance shine upon us. You put gladness into my heart. Lord, let your face shine on us. As soon as I lie down, I fall peacefully asleep. For you alone, O Lord, bring security to my dwelling. Lord, let your face shine on us. John steers confidence in the hearts of sinners. God the Father is ready to forgive us because in the recent Christ, we have a powerful intercessor before God's throne. A reading from the first letter of St. John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He is expiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. The way we may be sure that we know Him is to keep His commandments. Those who say, I know Him, but do not keep His commandments are liars, and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Lord Jesus, open the scriptures to us. Make our hearts burn while you speak to us. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of bread. 
while they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. And he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened her, their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. And you are witnesses of these things. My dear friends, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Naniniwala po ako mga kapatid na tayong lahat na narito sa loob ng simbahan at gayon din sa mga nanonood, tayo ay naniniwala sa divine providence. Kaya ang tanong ko po sa inyo, nakaranas na ba kayo ng divine providence? O naalala niyo pa ba yung pinaka-latest na divine providence na karanasan? Yung mga karanasan yung tipong ora mismo, mismo sa pagkakataong iyon, binago ng Diyos ang iyong desisyon. Sapagkat ang divine providence, normally, associated ito sa decision making. At masasabi mo, na yun ay divine providence, kapag mismong mismong pagkakataong iyon, biglang binago ng Diyos ang iyong desisyon. Ako, marami na po ako narinig ng mga kwento sa divine providence. Yung tipong nagugulat, una sa lahat, gulat ng gulat, hindi makapaniwala, biglang yung tipong, alam ko, Father, doon dapat ako pupunta eh. Alam ko, Father, mind, yung, yung, yung utak ko eh, nakahanda na papunta doon. Biglang, biglang, mismong pagkakataong yun, binago ng Diyos ang lakad ko. Yun yung mga tinatawag natin divine providence. Hindi mo mauunawaan, hindi mo maiintindihan, bigla na lang, hindi, ewan. Bigla akong dinala dito, ewan. Biglang siya ang pinili ko, ewan. Bakit yun ang pinili ko? Noong Holy Week pa lang, meron po akong nakilala, nakausap. Sabi niya sa akin, alam ko, Father, biglang, hindi ko alam, may, 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 may pupuntahan dapat ako, Father, eh. Bigla na lang akong dinala dito sa loob ng simbahan. Nagtataka nga po ako, eh, kasi wala talaga akong balak pumunta sa simbahan noong Holy Week. Holy Week yun, eh, Semana Santa. Hindi ko alam, Father, bigla akong dinala dito. At kung nasa loob na ako ng simbahan, nagulat po ako, Father, sabi niya. Nakita ko yung confession, kumpisal, at yun, bigla na lang siyang pumila ng umpisal. Yung tipong divine providence sa kanya na dinala siya upang mangumpisal. At alam nyo, sa mga eksena ng divine providence, mga kapatid, merong isang bagay na common. Yung mga karanasan ng divine providence, yung ending, alam nyo yung ending, at alam ko, alam natin ito, the ending will always be Peace. Mapayapa. Kayong nakausap ko sa kumpisal, iyak ng iyak. Emotional. 
Nung alam niyang first time niyang nabuho sa lahat ang nasa loob. Iyak ng iyak. It's a tears of joy. Nung tinatanong ko, bakit ka iyak ng iyak? Father, hindi ko alam. Ang gaan-gaan ng pakiramdam ko. Ngayon lang uli ako nakaranas ng mapayapang kalooban. At alam niya, that experience itself is a divine providence. Ora mismo, binago ang desisyon niya, binago ng Diyos ang lakad niya, dinala sa simbahan, mangumpisal. Mga kapatid, ang eksena sa ating Ibanghelyo nitong pangatlong linggo ng panahon ng pagkabuhay ni Jesus ay isang eksena, narrative, kwento ng divine providence. Kwento ng mga apostoles kung paano biglang binago ni Jesus ang kanilang desisyon. Sa unang bahagi, ang dalawang disipulo ang nagkakwento. Kwento nila kung paano nakita nila at natagpuan si Jesus. Kung paano binago, sapagkat ang plano mismo nila ay tumakas. Papunta na dapat sila sa, sa ibang bayan. Papunta sa bayan ng Imayus. Wala na. Doon na dapat sila. Tatakas na. Sabi nga nila, the place of Imayus is a place to forget. Sapagkat ang bayan ng Imayus, andun lahat. Kung gusto mong makalimot, pumunta ka doon. E eh, di ba tayo minsan ganun eh? Kung punong-puno na ang ating puso't isipan ng mga pagsubok, litong-lito na, iisa lang ang nais natin gawin, gusto ko na makalimot, kaya tatakas. But then, ora mismo, sa eksena na yun, binago ni Jesus ang kanilang desisyong ng pagtakas. Divine providence. Gayon din po sa mga apostoles na nagtatago, Sabi nga natin minsan, kapag tayo litong-lito na, disappointed, nasasaktan, sinaktan, desisyon agad-agad ng tao, gustong magtago na lang, talimutan ang lahat, magmumukbuk na lang, doon na lang sa loob, ayaw na magsalita, ayaw na makipag-usap, ayaw na lumabas. And yet, biglang binago ni Jesus ang kanilang desisyon. Divine providence. And they always ended up with the gift of the peace of mind and heart. And indeed, kapag divine providence yan, kapayapaan ang dinadala nito. At yun mismo ang nangyari sa kwento ng ating Ibanghelyo. Ano ang unang wini ka ni Jesus sa kanila? Ano ang unang biyayang ipinagkaloob sa kanila? Walang iba mga kapatid. Kapayapaan. Divine Providence, ibig sabihin, ramdam mo ang Diyos, kasama mo ang Diyos, kaisa mo ang Diyos, andyon ang Diyos. Kaya kapag binago ng Diyos, tulad ng kwento ko kanina, ramdam na ramdam niya na kasama niya ang Diyos, ang Diyos ang nagdala sa Kanya, nandun ang Diyos sa tabi niya. At yun mismo ang kwento ng Ibanghelyo. Lumapit ang Diyos. Lumapit ang Diyos. Pinuntahan sila ng Diyos. Sinamahan sila ng Diyos. At kita mo naman, naging mas mapayapa ang kanilang kalooban. Yung dalawang apostoles sa gustong loob, tumakas, takot na takot. Hindi na iunawaan ang eksena ng pagkamatay ni Jesus. Litong lito, kaya sila tumakas and yet dumating ang Diyos. Sinamahan sila, ayun, naging mas mapayapa. Gayon din sa mga nagkukulong, litong lito, lungkot na lungkot, nawala na ng pag-asa. Gusto nang tapusin ang lahat, ayaw nang makakita ng kapwa. Bagkos pinuntahan sila ng Diyos, sinamahan sila ng Diyos. Anong ending? Mapayapa. Divine Providence. Kung titignan natin yung mga eksena ng Divine Providence, 
pinaparamdam lang naman ng Diyos ang kanyang presensya. Ibig sabihin, mga kapatid, hindi nawawala ang presensya ng Diyos. Nandyan yan. Ang kailangan lang dapat nating gawin ay alalahanin ang presensya ng Diyos. Kaya kung babalikan natin yung mga eksena ng Divine Providence, tignan mo yung mga nagkukwento. Kung i-a-analyze mo yung kwento, ito lagi ang ending. Salamat sapagkat muli kong naalala ang Diyos. Kaya kapag nakakalimutan natin ang Diyos, kusang lalapit ang Diyos, kusang ipaparamdam sa iyo ng Diyos, ipaparamdam ang Kanyang presensya. Kaya sa mga pagkakataon na tayo litong-lito, tayo nawawala ng pag-asa, punong-puno ng pag-usubok, ang pinapaalala sa atin ng Ebanghelyo, mga kapatid, sa linggong ito, ay simple lang, alalahanin natin ang presensya ng Diyos. Hindi tayo nag-iisa. Andyan ang Diyos. Kasama natin ang Diyos. Katuwang natin ang Diyos. Sana lang, huwag na huwag nating kalimutan ang Diyos. Naalala ko yung kwento ng isang seminarista. Ngayon, pari na. Sabi niya, kapag pag pinapaalala mo sa kanya yung kwento, paano siya naging pari, iisa lang. It's a divine providence, Father. Binago ng Diyos ang buhay ko, binago niya ang desisyon ko. Yung kwentong ito na siya isang siman, nasa da- edad na siya ng 30 nung pamasok sa seminaryo. 30 years old na, siman. Pwede ko sabihin natin yung isang siman, aba, medyo positibo yung, yung income. Maganda yung income. Indeed, ang laki na ng ipon niya. Sabihin natin, may mga naipon na, may napundar na. At hindi lang yan. Walong taon na sila ng kanyang kasintahan. Handang-handa na lahat. May plano ng ikasal. Andun na lahat. Kaso, ora mismo, biglang binago ng Diyos ang desisyon. Divine Providence. At kung pabalikan mo yung kwento niya, sabi niya, ito lang sinasabi niya. Nakalimutan niya ang Diyos nung siya'y tiba-tiba. Nakalimutan niya ang Diyos nung siya'y tumatanggap na napakalaking sweldo. Nakalimutan niya ang Diyos habang gumaganda ang buhay niya. Nakalimutan niya ang Diyos sa kanyang luho, sa kanyang buhay. At biglang pinaalala sa kanya ang Diyos. Divine Providence, na bago ang lahat, binago ang lahat, at ngayon kung tatuningin mo siya, kumusta ka? Father, nawala ang lahat, iniwan ako, nawala ang income ko, Nawala ang luho ko, bagkos mapayapa. Divine Providence. We all stand and all together we profess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, 
and life everlasting. Amen. In the breaking of the bread, Christ Jesus makes himself known to us as our life and resurrection. He sends us to be witnesses to his name, and through him we present our petition to the Father, and we shall say, Lord, listen to your people. Lord, listen to your people. May the church be a beacon of life, helping people in darkness to come to know Jesus as the way, the truth, and the life. We pray. Lord, listen to your people. May all leaders, by governing with fidelity, those entrusted to their care, build nations in peace, brotherhood, and respect for human dignity, we pray. Lord, listen to your people. May all consecrated men and women proclaim your resurrection through their lives, their prayer, and their service to others, we pray. Lord, listen to your people. Bless our labor, that it may sustain our life on earth and enhance our human dignity, ease our burden, make our faith strong, and inspire us to put our trust in you. We pray. Lord, listen to your people. Welcome into eternal life our deceased brothers and sisters, so that they may truly see the light of your countenance, we pray. Lord, listen to your people. Let us pray for the urgent concerns of our community and our personal intentions. We pray. Lord, listen to your people. God our Father, you restored us to yourself through the resurrection of Christ, your Son. Hear the prayers of your people and strengthen us in giving witness to our Easter faith. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Please stand. Pray, my dear friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, the sufferings of your exultant church. And as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring we bear fruit in perpetual happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always at all times, O Lord, but in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. Through him, the children of light rise to eternal life. 
and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising, the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Save us, save us, Savior of the world For by your cross and resurrection You have set us free Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Socrates, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the lights of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
Please stand again. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you. My peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And now let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you all. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those who were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us now turn to Mary, help of Christians, for the increase of priestly vocations in the church in Lingayen, Dagupan. And we shall answer, grant through your prayers many vocations to the priesthood. Grant through your prayers many vocations to the priesthood. You accompanied your son on his way to Calvary. Walk with our seminarians in their journey of priestly formation. Mary, help of Christians. Grant through your prayers many vocations to the priesthood. You are the mother of the Good Shepherd. Inspire our youth to follow your voice, the voice of your son, and courageously answer his call to be shepherds. Mary, help of Christians. Grant through your prayers many vocations to the priesthood. You were with the apostles in prayer on the Pentecost day. Stay with us in prayer so that the fire of the Spirit may descend on our young men seeking their vocation in life. Mary, help of Christians. Grant through your prayers many vocations to the priesthood. Your Son entrusted to you the beloved disciple at the foot of the cross. Take into your immaculate heart our young men who are reluctant to answer the call to be priests. Mary, help of Christians. Grant through our, your prayers many vocations to the priesthood. Mary, help of Christians, we place all our young men under your motherly protection. Inspire them to serve the church as priests of your son. Take under your motherly care our seminarians being formed for the priesthood. Accompany with your help your priests as they follow your son, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Maraming salamat po sa inyong pakikiisa nito ating banal na misa at gayon din po sa mga nanonood sa Facebook at sa YouTube. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads for the blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of His only begotten Son, was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. May he, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. And may you who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in the right manner of this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. And may the blessing of the Almighty God, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Our Mass is ended. We go in peace. Thanks be, Thanks to, be God. to God. Alleluia, alleluia. We shall now do the blessing of the sick. God, our Almighty Father, by your blessing, you have given us strength and support in our frailty. Turn with kindness toward our sick brothers and sisters. Free them from all illness and restore them to good health through the intercession of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag, so that in the sure knowledge of your goodness, they will gratefully bless your holy name and bring, and we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. We shall now do the blessing of your religious articles. In memory of the mysteries of the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, to the honor and glory of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag, may these rosaries, images, candles, and other religious articles be blessed and made holy in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.